Hello there, Chad Weber, and we are at the final video for your free mortgage website.com training. And this is the video where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. And in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to take this, this new website that you now have control of and start generating traffic. Without traffic, the website's not going to do you a whole lot of good, right? So we're going to show you some, some basic techniques and some basic strategies and methodology that will allow you a, a couple of steps up over your competition. So, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so first things first, let's let's talk about what we're going to cover in this video. Uh, the first thing we're going to cover is Google. In, in this case, something that's known as SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. Now, Search Engine Optimization simply means that uh, there are tweaks that you can make to your website and to your posting strategies that will allow your site to rank higher in the search engines than other websites. So if somebody were to go to Google and do a search for mortgage loans or a refinance or how to buy a home or purchase a home, uh, you want to be the person uh, or the website that shows up on top. You want to be the first website that is seen by hungry borrowers that are in need of your services, specifically when they're in your neighborhood, in your hometown, your city, your states that you're targeting. So we're going to talk about how do you do this? How do you make this a reality instead of just a pipe dream? Then we're going to talk about why SEO is so important because uh, th th there are, believe it or not, there are some individuals that, that uh, really haven't kept up to date with, with what's going on in the world of SEO and search engine traffic. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, and then we're going to go over the simple steps that you can take now. These are not actions that you have to plan on doing 30 days from now or 60 days from now. These are actions that you can start taking immediately. As soon as you learn these strategies, my recommendation is that you put them into action. All right, so there's a, there's a big problem, though. There, there's a really big problem for most loan officers, and, and that is uh, that, that with, with most loan officers, they're, they're not really sure how everything fits together, how it all works, okay? Uh, we know that we need a website. We know that Google delivers huge amounts of traffic and can make, uh, make or break of uh, many people's uh, online marketing strategies, in fact. Uh, but how does it all come together in a duplicatable marketing strategy that can be implemented uh, by, by just your average? Joe, you know, you, who, who wants to have to learn an entire new strategy from scratch that takes uh, weeks or months to perfect, right? So how does this all play together and work together nicely? Well, what it boils down to, folks, is that Google is the 900-pound gorilla in the room, so to speak. Their search engine delivers more traffic than any other search engine. In fact, Google delivers more traffic than the next three largest search engines combined. More than 60% of all internet traffic goes through Google at some point. So that means this is the search engine we're going to target. And the way Google works is Google, think of it as a large filing cabinet. You guys may have heard this description before if you've seen some of my previous videos. Google is like the world's largest filing cabinet. They index your website. Okay, They index websites all over the internet. In fact, there's more than one trillion individual pages on the internet that are indexed by Google. And when somebody goes to Google and types something out in that search box, Google goes into that filing cabinet to locate the top most relevant websites that they believe deserve to be displayed above all others. So that's how everything works together, folks. If you really want to narrow things down to the, the simplest concept, just think of Google and the filing cabinet. What can you tell Google? And what activities and actions can you take that will tell Google that your website deserves to be one of the first websites displayed when somebody performs a search? So next on our list is talking about leverage. Another reason why this is so important and the big problem that most loan officers have is that there's only 24 hours in the day. Well, you need at least uh, six to eight of those hours to sleep. You need some hours to eat and to commute and so forth and take care of other activities. So you have a very, very limited amount of time in each day to get things done. And as you start growing your business, what you're going to find is you get busier and busier and you have less and less time 
for manual marketing strategies. Well, SEO, utilizing the web as a marketing tool, means that you have something that's out there advertising and marketing for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And with SEO, once you start ranking on that front page, it works whether you're at work or not. It's capturing leads and marketing to individuals who are raising their hand saying, hey, I'm interested and I need a loan. So I'm going to the web and I'm searching for loan officers in Chicago or Atlanta or wherever you happen to be. And your website's popping up and telling them why they need to go with you. So non-leveraged activity is a big problem for most loan officers. And SEO, the methodologies that we're teaching you here, will help you address this. The, another big problem in the world of, of uh, marketing and using the web as a lead generator is misinformation. I've seen so many loan officers uh, attempt to research this very topic that we're covering now online and only to uncover bad information that can actually result in their websites being punished okay punished for overzealous efforts there's a lot of websites telling you to do things that can raise red flags within Google and actually have your website shoved down to the very bottom where you're lucky to get a single visitor for the entire year <laughs> versus uh, the potential hundreds or thousands per month right so there's, there's the opportunity to do things the wrong way. And that's why I'm here to teach you some basic fundamentals that will help you to avoid this problem. So let's talk about what Google wants. Feed the Beast is the name of this slide, <laughs> appropriately titled, right? Google is the beast, the 900-pound beast. And what Google is looking for, remember the analogy of the world's largest filing cabinet. Well, what would you, if you were in charge of the world's largest filing cabinet, what would you look for? What would you want to put in that cabinet if you knew that it was very important that people find relevant information to certain topics? Well, the first thing that you'd want to do is make sure that the most up-to-date content is available. So fresh content. So let's say I go, I were to go to weather.com. Let's say I wanted to know what the weather was doing in St. Louis today. Well, what would happen if weather.com was displaying on that front page weather from uh, nine months ago? And then I had to dig through just to find information relevant to what the weather's going to do today or tomorrow. That'd be annoying, wouldn't it? That'd be obnoxious. It would not be logical. It would not make sense. And uh, weather.com would probably become suddenly very unpopular. Old information is not what Google's interested in. Sure, it's still archived somewhere, you know, because at some point some people do want to look at historical archives and information, but by and large, what we're looking for is the most up to date information. If I'm looking for movie times, I don't care what the movie times were three months ago, I care what they are today. Same with interest rates. If I'm looking to do a loan and I want to quote, I want to know if interest rates are going up or down. I want to know what they're doing today, not not yesterday, not the day before. So fresh content is very important when you want to rank your website. And we'll talk about what to do about that. Uh, next, Google cares about consistency. Now, I, I bring this up as such a big deal because it's not uncommon. Just like any new exciting marketing strategy, what many loan officers do is they get excited out of the gate and they start taking action right away. Okay, and that's wonderful. That's wonderful. We want you to take fast action. But this action lasts for maybe a week maybe two weeks, maybe three at the most. And then what we find is every week thereafter, there's less and less activity until it just completely stops. And they move on to the next shiny object. Google doesn't like that. Google is looking for an example of, of, of consistency with your website. They want to know why should they display your website today and tomorrow and from now on. Not, hey, should we just display you today and then display somebody else tomorrow. They want consistency. So consistency is very important. Uh, Google is also looking for what we call natural ranking signals. They don't want to display websites that are trying to game the system and, and find workarounds around the rules. And, and that's, that's what we call uh, link spam, and that's what we call SEO spam or black hat techniques. You want to stay away from those techniques, and that's why I cautioned you about a lot of websites that are giving dangerous advice and, and strategies that may work but they may work for a month or two months before Google finds out. Here's the thing. Google is a multi-billion dollar company with thousands of people dedicated to looking for spam. It's you versus them if you're trying to game the system. Now, who do you think is going to win that battle? Who's going to win that battle? The thousands of people that are there to combat what you're trying to do? And the company that has billions of dollars and, and millions and, and tens of millions of that go towards protecting against spam? Or you? Who's going to win that battle? Google will. 
So that's why we stay away from those techniques that work on the short term but ultimately can get your site banned or blacklisted from the search rankings. So just, just giving you guys some, some, some proper warnings here and some heads up as to what to avoid. And then finally, Google cares about signs of popularity. If the content isn't popular, if it's not being consumed by the individuals, for example, if somebody goes to your website and they leave within five seconds, Google views that as a sign that the website's not popular. They also look at Facebook and Twitter and, and other social media sites to see if people are linking to and talking about your site. That's what Google wants. That tells them, hey, then they must be popular. This website must be uh, uh, worthy of being displayed on the front page. As your popularity goes up, so do your rankings. So we're going to talk about ways that you can take advantage of these signals that Google's looking for. So let's, let's talk about action. What can you do now? This is step one. So if you're taking notes, here's where you write down step number one. Step number one is we gave you a blog. You have a built-in blogging function on your new website. In fact, your whole website can function as a blog. That blog is not there to look pretty. That blog is there for you to use, to post to, add new content. And you need to add new content one to two times per week at the minimum. If you can do more and keep that up, then great. If you can't keep up posting more than that, then it's, it's better to be consistent and post one to two times a week than to post five times a week and then next week only post once and the week after that post none. All right, so one to two times a week for consistency. And I want you to post, uh, uh, put, put this on your schedule, put this somewhere visible to remind yourself. It doesn't have to be a, a perfect piece of literature. It doesn't need to be brilliant writing. Just post something, even if it's a couple of paragraphs or a link to another article that you read about interest rates or something that's happening in the financial world, do it. A post is better than no post, even if it's short. I recommend occasionally you putting longer articles in there. All right, about at least half your articles need to be uh, somewhere around 500 words, 600 words, but the rest can be short, that's fine. Just make sure you keep up with that one to two times posting per week. The more frequent you do it, the better, as long as it's consistent. And I'm gonna, we're going to sh uh, show you what to do in, in the blog post here in just a moment. But next, I want you to use keywords, but use those keywords sparingly. And this is where a lot of people get themselves into trouble. Uh, we've mentioned that Google does look at the words that you use on the page of your website. So if, I'm, if I have a website that I want to rank for the keyword, you know, Atlanta Mortgage Loans, and nowhere on my website do I use the words Atlanta Mortgage Loans, then Google's going to view that as a signal that your website's n obviously off-topic. But if you use the keyword Atlanta Mortgage Loans, then that's used as a signal that this website's on topic. It's about Atlanta Mortgage Loans. So obviously, you're going to be considered for ranking Atlanta Mortgage Loans. But a lot of loan officers have taken this as, as uh, advice to go out and just plaster and pepper their websites with these keywords. And, that, and nothing could be further from the truth. You need to use these keywords sparingly. I use them once, maybe twice per the entire page. I've seen individuals use the keyword 10, 20, even 30 times on a single page to the point where it was unreadable, and they think they're doing a good thing. But this is what we call uh, uh, keyword spam or keyword stuffing, and it's a great way to get Google to block your website or at least punish you. <laughs> so not something we want to do. Use the keywords sparingly. Um, I'm also going to recommend the use of uh, a latent semantic indexing. Latent Semantic Indexing, or LSI, is s simply the usage of keywords or variations of keywords that are similar to the keyword you want to rank for. So, for example, let me give you an example. Uh, Atlanta Mortgage Loan. Well, what's another word for mortgage loan? Okay, how about home loan? How about just the word mortgages? Loans, loan officer, refinance. All of these are keywords that are similar and that's what Google looks for the the Google algorithm is smart enough and flexible enough to understand when keywords are interrelated or interconnected so loan officer real estate homes home loans mortgages refinance 
debt consolidation. All of these are considered uh, as part of what we call the financial tree. So Google interconnects all of these keywords, understanding that they're all fin finance related or mortgage related. So what that means is if you use those other words or variations of words on the same page, you can be creative in your writing, not sound repetitive, and still give Google all the right signals that your website is on topic. So it, it sounds late in semantic indexing, sounds complex, but obviously, as you just heard, it is not. Simply use similar words on that page. And uh, you don't want to pepper your site with them. Just sprinkle them in. Um, use your primary target keywords sparingly. Sprinkle in those additional keywords, and you will be doing far, far better than your competition who does not understand the usage of keywords in late in semantic indexing. Next, I want you to ping when you post. And I'm going to show you what this means here in just a minute. Let's go to, we're going to go to the website here. All right, so what we're talking about is pinging. And there is a website on the internet called pingomatic.com. All right, so here's the website, pingomatic.com. You can see the link right up here at the top of the page. Pingomatic. All this is, pinging, again, may sound or look complex, but all pinging is is telling these large, uh, uh, what we would call uh, content aggregators of websites, they're going to go to the Internet and look for websites that have new content on them. Well, pinging is you simply sending that information to them and letting them know, hey, you're raising your hand saying, hey, check out my website. I have new content. Come aggregate this content. So we have sites such as FeedBurner, um, even uh, Google and, and Yahoo have all these uh, feeds that go out and search the Internet for new content because that's what they are, search engines. They need to index new content. So you're going to make it easy for them, which means, again, you're getting a leg up on your competition. You don't need to understand why it works. All you need to do is understand how to make it work. And by going to pingomatic.com, all you're going to do is type out the name of your website or blog. So let's say uh, I was Chicago Home Loans blog or something along those lines. Okay, um, Then you're going to put the, the home page of your website. You're going to put HTTP colon slash slash. Now I'm just making up this website here. And then if you have an RSS feed, you would type that out here. If you don't know what an RSS feed is, then that's fine. Don't You don't need to put it in here. Uh, we, we go through that training in our Advanced Loan Officer Marketing Lab training. Uh, but uh, this is going to work whether you include that or not. And then all you're going to do is click the Send Pings button. Make sure that you have everything checked, all of these boxes that are appropriate checked. And then you're going to click Send Pings. It's going to take 5 to 10 seconds. And this site's going to go out and forward your new content to all of these websites and just understand you've done a very good thing okay so it's not complex what you've done is taken proper proactive action and again you're you're helping Google and even Yahoo and Bing and all the major search engines find your content so let's go back to our uh, slides here so write these down folks if you're taking notes use keywords on each page or blog post but use them sparingly. Use latent semantic indexing, similar words or variations of the words that you want to rank for, and then use pingomatic.com whenever you've added a new post or even a new page. Then go to pingomatic and just, again, that just takes 30 seconds as you saw. Um, do not go to pingomatic and think that you can ping when you have not added new content. You do that enough times and you can actually get banned from pingomatic and the others uh, um, aggregators. So, so uh, we don't want to abuse those services. Only use it when there's new fresh content. Very simple. None of this takes much time to do, as you can see, but it's going to give you a distinct advantage over your competitors. Uh, step number two. Now, when you're actually making the posts and setting up the pages themselves, I want you to fill in the metadata um, utilizing the plugin that we provided you with. Now, if you're wondering, well, what the heck is metadata? metadata we're going to go back live to our dashboard again. I'm going to go to, let's say I'm setting up a new page, for example. And you could go in and do this to existing pages and blog posts as well. This applies to both uh, pages on your website as well as the blog posts themselves. All right, so you see how I've gone to add a new page. So let's say I'm adding my title here, my content here. But as I scroll down, I'm going to notice something here that says SEO settings, page title, page description, and keywords. You need to do this on every single page and every single post. So I'm going to, let's say I wanted to rank for best 
Chicago home loans on this page. Okay. Well, I'm going to put that into my page title here underneath the SEO settings. And I'm also going to make sure that I tell my website, because this is going to tell Google what I want to rank for, home loans. I recommend that you target one, maybe two keywords per page. That's it. I prefer just one per page or per post, but if you want to do two, that's not going to harm you. But if you start going beyond that, you start to dilute the effectiveness of this particular strategy. Uh, in the middle here, you're going to see a section for page description. Limit yourself to one, maybe two sentences at the most. And in your page description, you want to attempt to use at least portions of your keywords. So Chicago home loans. And just think of this as writing a classified ad. What you type into this page description is what's going to be displayed on Google. So this is your opportunity to write something compelling that's just one to two sentences. So it's almost like writing a, a tweet on Twitter. So you have to be very concise. But write something that makes people want to click. And try to work in your keyword if you can. If you can't, that's fine. Still go ahead and write. Uh, but if you can squeeze in your keyword or at least a part of a keyword, such as home loans or Chicago or Chicago home or something along those lines, it's better than nothing. But remember, you only have one or two sentences at the most to write something compelling. Keep it short. Make it compelling. And uh, click the update button. What you've now done is you've set up each page to target individual keywords, and that's going to feed that data to, to Google when they crawl your website and tell them, hey, here's what I want to rank for, and here's how I want to be displayed. So a huge opportunity, huge opportunity. Make sure you do this not just on pages, but on blog posts as well. You have the same feed and option. All right, step three. So as you can see, step one, step two, very simple. But now we're going to move on to step three, and that is I want you to link your social media to your website. You have Twitter, you have Facebook, you have YouTube, you have LinkedIn, and, and chances are you probably have multiple other social media website profiles. So the, the first thing that I want you to do is go to those profiles and post an active link to your website within those profiles. If your profiles don't link back to your website, then you're missing out on huge opportunities to get some extra brownie points with Google. So uh, to, to post an active website, you need to be typing out the full URL of your website. And that means more than just www. You need to type out the full http colon slash slash www dot whatever your website is dot com. Okay, so start linking back. Go back to every profile that you have. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. I don't care what it is. Make sure you have an active link pointing at all of your sites. Next, I want you to also link back to your website in the content itself. So not just in your profiles, but if you have a Facebook uh, profile, then, then make a post about it. Not just in your profile, but actually make a live post and link to a specific page on your website, not just your home page. Same thing with Twitter, same thing with YouTube, same thing with LinkedIn. Make sure that you have active posts, not just profiles. So you're talking about your website and you're linking to pages other than just your home page. So maybe the about page or the, the, the loan services page or, or choose something because that shows as more natural linking than just everything pointing to your home page and you'll get ranked quicker with Google typically when you link to individual pages than to just your home page. Google likes that because it shows as a natural ranking signal. Again, you don't need to understand why it works, just understand that it does and take action on it. Next, Google cares about consistency. We talked about that already, but let's let's uh, let's go over this just one more time as to what you can do about it. Do not start and then stop. Avoid that. Don't give up. I've seen so many loan officers get so close, so close to ranking. You know, they give it maybe a month or two months and they give up. But keep in mind that uh, uh, SEO is not necessarily always cumulative. And, and what I mean by that is sometimes it may look like you're not moving in the rankings at all. But you just simply make one tweak or finally tip through that, uh, tip past that initial threshold with the proper blog post. The next thing you know, you're on page one. I've seen it happen again and again and again. But I've also seen so many loan officers give up thinking that they're not making any progress when the reality is they're simply in the Google sandbox because they have a brand new website and Google doesn't know who they are yet. So Google's sitting back and watching to see if you are consistent before they start ranking your site. So don't give up and thinking and tell yourself, well, this doesn't work. 
remember that the advantage of ranking well and why it's worth even sometimes months of effort is once you start ranking on that front page this is leveraged effort I'm still generating or getting benefits from rankings and articles and things that I wrote uh, four five six years ago and I'm still getting paid because of good rankings and you can too the leveraged effort here or the leverage result and reward is far in excess of just about any other marketing strategy you've probably ever engaged in when you stop direct mail you stop getting results from direct mail you have to keep sending that direct mail but with SEO when you rank well once you have that ranking if you hold on to that ranking then you can benefit from it a year from now two years from now three years from now whether you do anything with it or not and that's the beauty of SEO so don't give up folks also don't assume that it's not working just because you're not on page one or page two yet and also you have to keep up with what's going on in SEO those who have not kept up in the past 12 months are probably doing things that can get themselves banned now versus what worked 12 months ago it doesn't mean you need to learn things all over again from the ground up but it does mean you need to uh, keep up with the little tweaks just like any industry there's advancements being made and modifications if you don't keep learning then chances are you're using outdated strategies and possibly doing things that can harm your results and that's why that's why I recommend that you take advantage of our loan officer marketing lab paid membership because this is where we're going to show you for those of you that need results now we're going to show you how to do things that will accelerate this SEO process for most loan officers they're lucky if they see results after three or four months sometimes five six seven eight months or even a year but in our paid membership we show you strategies that can deliver results in 30 days sometimes we our record is we saw someone one of our members actually uh, not only rank on page one within three days but also actually get his first loan and application within three days again I'm not saying that's everybody you're gonna uh, duplicate those results but it does show you what's possible generally speaking when you accelerate the process you can see improvement and results within your first 30 days and that's very rare with a lot of marketing strategies these days so that's quite a wonderful feeling to actually start reaping rewards within the first 30 days for those of you that need to start getting business right away I recommend that you upgrade to our loan officer marketing lab paid membership we're also going to show you what's called hyper local marketing where are some where are some websites and what are some strategies outside of SEO that can deliver traffic and deliver borrowers to your website it's not all about Google folks there's there's life outside of Google Google's wonderful and like we said the 900 pound gorilla on the block but we're gonna give you other strategies outside of SEO that can start delivering traffic right away and these strategies aren't necessarily paid strategies we're gonna teach you some free methods that you can implement right away to start getting results so that way you're not putting all your eggs in one basket we're also gonna show you how to t capitalize on mobile marketing what can you do uh, with mobile marketing we, we now know that more than half of all visitors to your average website are coming from mobile devices they're on their smartphones they're on their iPods iPads and galaxies and, and what have you so how can you capitalize on that and do things that other loan officers are not that will make you stand out and earn you more business we're going to show you directories that can deliver 10 to 20 times the results of average backlinks and directory submissions again this is a free strategy and we're going to show you what directories to target and just how easy it is to start getting uh, uh, start getting those brownie points from Google and start getting traffic uh, even without utilizing the basic SEO process ultimately at the end of the day we're going to show you how to completely dominate your local market how do you become the go-to loan officer and the loan officer that's grabbing the lion's share of the leads because as you've seen most cities most modern cities have thousands and thousands of searches every single month from individuals looking for homes for sale looking for refinances looking for loan officers looking for realtors how can you be the person that takes advantage of all of those searches and they end up on your website so not only are you picking up uh, refinances and and purchase loans but you can also be the person that's introducing these individuals that don't have realtors yet to your local realtors to become the go-to guy that gets referrals from realtors as well it's a 360 degree marketing strategy and all you have to do all you need to do is look down 
look down and we have we have some links where you can click on any of the links on these pages to go to and be redirected to the sales page that or the order page that will show you more about the loan officer marketing lab membership I have barely even scratched the surface here you get so much more everything from video marketing strategies YouTube Facebook social media we teach it all how to properly structure an email campaign that will convert two to three times as many leads into closed loans as you are now if you want to know how to do these things we'll show you but all you have to do is look down click on one of our links or click on any of the pages that you currently don't have access to on this page and I'll bring you to the sales page to show you what happens next I'm more than happy to welcome you aboard the uh, premium edition of loan officer marketing lab and uh, again guys take action on what you've learned that's whether you decide to upgrade or, or, or not take action on what you've learned if nothing else, you now have yourself a professional grade website. Do something with it. Because otherwise, what's the point? The website's out there. Let's get traffic to it. You wouldn't build a mall in the middle of a desert or in the Grand Canyon, would you? You wouldn't pay for a billboard in the middle of the Grand Canyon or of a desert, would you? Well, then why have a beautiful website, especially one that's proven to convert, if you're not going to throw a bunch of traffic at it? And that's what I'm here to show you how to do. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and again, congratulations on your new website. I look forward to welcoming you aboard the Paid Loan Officer Marketing Lab membership for those of you that decide to upgrade. And again, best of luck to you. Take action. I'll chat with you soon. Make it a great and profitable day as always. Bye now.